hello students welcome to this lecture on uh, direct sum decompositions so uh, first of all you should know what is the direct sum decomposition uh, the direct sum uh, decomposition is done to decompose the underlying vector space v in a sum of invariant subspaces for t such that the restriction operators on those subspaces are simple here simple means the not complex ones uh, we can define those easily uh, so definition one is related to the independence of subspaces that w1 w2 wk be the subspaces of a vector space v we say that w1 w2 wk are independent if uh, some of the elements from w1 w2 the small w2 and so on up to this is a small wk from this capital wk equal to zero that is w i belongs to w i if this sum is zero implies each of these element are zero so for all i like lying between one to k so in such a situation these these subspaces w1 w2 wk are said to be independent now for uh, if we have only two element, two subspaces here the meaning of independence is w1 intersection w equal to 0 if for k greater than 2 it means you have subspace w1 to wk the meaning of independence can be like this k wj intersection w1 plus w2 wj minus 1 plus wj plus 1 you have taken wj out of here up to wk equal to 0 whenever this j lies between uh, 2 to k uh, now uh, we prove one lemma uh, an important lemma related to this direct sum decomposition in fact uh, this lemma gives you the complete picture of the direct sum decomposition so the statement is like this let v be a finite dimensional vector space let w1 w2 wk be subspaces of v and let w equal to w1 plus w2 and so on up to wk then following conditions are equivalent the first one is w1 w2 wk are independent for each j whenever this j lies between 2 to k we have this type of condition wj intersection w1 w2 up to wj minus 1 equal to 0 if bj is the ordered basis of wj then b equal to b1 b2 bk is an ordered basis of w where b1 is basis of w1 b2 is basis of w2 and so on bk is basis of wj uh, sorry b, bk is basis of this wk so you can say you put all the elements of all the bases in one set then this b gives the ordered basis for the whole space w so uh, we show we prove these conditions as equivalent uh, first we'll show a if and only if b then we'll show uh, this uh, uh, the next one uh, two other equivalent conditions so first we uh, prove a implies b and then we'll prove b implies a let w belongs to uh, in, in uh, how you prove this you will consider that a is given and you will prove that this condition b okay when a is given that means w1 w2 are independent so we will consider the condition of independence now you have to show that this uh, type of uh, set consists only zero element in, uh, here the intersection of wj with this have only zero element so suppose you take this element w from this and you have to show that this w will be zero all right when this is belongs this w is from this intersection this w is from wj as well as from this if you consider it is from wj it is something small wj now if it is from this sum then we'll consider it as w1 w2 and up to wj minus 1 now from 1 and 2 this and this are equal so you can uh, put here wj equal to this quantity when you take wj on this side so minus wj equal to 0 but you know this is element of w1 the element of w2 and so on and so on uh, these are in up to wk are independent so definitely this is up to wj so element these are also independent when these are independent then definitely all of these must be individually equal to zero that means the whole uh, th this element capital in this small w will be equal to zero and that implies 
the intersection of wj with this it comes out to be zero so this proves a implies b now uh, we show b implies a so here we assume b that is intersection of wj with these equal to zero and we have to show that w1 w2 wj and up to wk are independent so uh, you take uh, w1 belongs to w1 small w2 belongs to w2 small wk belongs to capital wk such that not all zero such that not all zero but their sum equal to zero let j be the largest integer such that wj not equal to zero so you can write this sum as w1 w2 wj and other are zero so in this way you can have wj equal to this thing now you see this is from capital w1 this is from capital w2 and this is from capital wj minus 1 so their sum comes out to be from this uh, it is uh, it, it is not uh, important that here is minus sign because if w1 belongs to w1 then minus w1 will also belongs to capital w1 that is why minus means uh, you, you should not com confuse it with that okay, here we are using minus sign or here we are having the plus sign so in this way this element belongs to this but uh, this is equal to small wj so you can say this wj also belongs to this so you can say this wj is element of this as well as elements of f capital wj so this wj belongs to the intersection of wj and uh, this therefore a non-zero vector wj belongs to this which contradicts our assumption b our assumption b is that this intersection has only zero element so hence our supposition is wrong so what we have supposed we have supposed that w1 wk not all zero this is wrong that means all should be zero that means w1 w2 up to wk all must be zero when all are zero so you can say w1 w2 up to wk are independent this proves a thus we have shown that a if and only if b next we show a if and only if c so here first we assume a and we'll prove c so assume a let w1 w2 wk are independent and b i is the basis of w i that means b1 is basis of w1 b2 is basis of w2 and b k is basis of w k so we put all the elements of these bases in one set and we call this set as b now the linear combination of finite number of elements of b can be written as linear combination of finite number of elements of b1 plus linear combination of finite number of elements of b2 and so on linear combination of finite number of elements of bk but you know b1 is basis of capital w1 b2 is basis of capital w2 so the linear combination of finite number of elements of b1 will be an element of uh, w1 so let this is small w1 this uh, small w1 is element of capital w1 similarly for this part you have small w2 and so on for this part finally you have wkc now if their sum is equal to 0 then each one of must be equal to 0 why because this w1 is the linear combination of finite number of elements of b1 basis and b1 is a basis when the finite linear combination of finite number of elements equal to 0 then all the scalars must be equal to 0 then all the scalars must be equal to 0 similarly for this case similarly for this case so w1 w2 wk all are equal to 0 why we are taking these as 0 because we have already assumed that w1 wk are independent so definitely this uh, w1 must be equal to 0 when this is equal to 0 that means all scalars are 0 w2 equal to 0 means that all scalars in this linear combination are 0 and so on so in this way in this linear combination all the scalars are 0 when all scalars are 0 that means b is you can say this b1 b2 bk forms a basis of w w equal to w1 w2 and wk so this proves c so we have proved a implies c c implies a is an obvious condition so we have 
Proved B if and only if A if and only if C. So all the, these three conditions A, B, C are equivalent. Now the direct sum of subspaces. If all conditions of the last lemma holds, we say that the sum W equal to W1 up to WK is direct sum of W1, W2, WK. And we write W equal to W1, direct sum W2, direct sum and so on, direct sum WK. This is also direct sum. You should put circle here. So this is a definition of direct sum of subspaces. Now we have two examples related to direct sum. Let V be a finite dimensional vector space over a field F. Let B be the basis, uh, be an ordered basis of V. Now you suppose let W1 be a subspace generated by the single element V1. W2 by single element W2. WK by single element VK and so on. Then definitely this V which has the basis this will be direct sum of w1 w2 and wk and because all the above conditions will be satisfied now you see another example let n be a positive integer and f be a field of complex numbers let v be a space of n by n matrices over f now let because v is the space of n all n by n matrices over the field f let W1 be subspace of all symmetric matrices and W2 be subspace of skew symmetric matrices. So definitely W1 is subspace, sub, subspace of V and W2 is also a subspace of V. Then we can check that V is the direct sum of W1 and W2. So how we can check? We check the conditions here. Uh, you suppose uh, one element A belongs to V then uh, and let A1 from W1 and A2 from W2. Now from the property of symmetric matrices we know that the element every square matrix can be symmetric matrix can be put uniquely in the form a plus a transpose and 1 by 2 a plus a, a transpose and similar is the property for skew symmetric matrices this a2 can be put like this so this is properties in the properties of matrices now if you add these you will get a so definitely this is element of w1 this is element of w2 and this is element of v so you can write that v equal to w1 plus w2 so this is equation one now we can say v is the linear sum of w1 and w2 now we have to show that their intersection has only zero element so you are considering there is some matrix b belongs to their intersection so b belongs to w1 and b belongs to w2 since uh, W1 is the space of symmetric matrices, so B can be written like this. W2 is space of skew symmetric matrices. The, this B can be written like this. B equal to minus B transpose. Now this B here and this B here, these can be equated. So B transpose equal to minus B transpose. So this is equal to zero matrix. And BT is zero matrix. When you again take the transpose again, so you get B as a zero matrix. So that implies W1 intersection W2 has only zero element. So using equation 1 and 2, you can say V is direct sum of W1 and W2. So that's it about uh, the direct sum decomposition here.